Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Align and Distribute tool to help keep our objects and text and anything we, that we draw lined up and squared up with the page with each other and looking awesome. So I'm going to come out here so we can see the whole page. I'm going to open up. Well, first of all, let's just draw. Let's draw a uh, star. Got a nice black star we'll put right in the middle here. And then we'll go to our object, go all the way down to Align and Distribute. We can also open it by pressing Control shift a That's what it tells us. That brings up our panel over here on the right-hand side for Align and Distribute. So there's a couple different... So th first of all, this lets us align this, align whatever object we have relative to a couple different sources. By default, it's relative to selection area, which means if I have another... Uh, Let's say I draw like a rectangle and I make it red and I make it the size of the page or I make it not even the size of the page. Let's just make it like this and I lower it down to the a lower level below the star. And I want this star to be in the center of this red box. I can just select the whole selection area. And so based on this whole, basically this dotted line, this star, I can center it to, this, to the middle of that uh, selection area. I can center it this way. I can push it all the way to the left so it so the, the first part of the star touches the very left side of the selection box. I can push it to the right, um, push it to the top, but I usually do this for centering things. So I go center uh, on the, uh, what is this, x-axis, y-axis, uh, and then center along here on the horizontal, horizontal vertical, I guess we'll just call it that. Another thing we can do, if I click this red box and delete it, we can center this star if we change this relative to the page, now we can center this star relative to the page. So now if I center it, it'll center on the page uh, vertically, and we can center on the page horizontally as well. So now we have the star centered on our printed page or on our uh, page, whatever, whatever we're designing on. What else can we do relative to? So we can go relative to, uh, if I, I draw a circle here and I put it down to the bottom level, we can center or we can align based on the first object selected. So based on the first selected, so if I select the star first, then I go shift and select this red circle, and then we go to center, it's going to center this circle based on the center of the star. So it'll find the center of the star and align the center of the circle to the star center. So see the star stays in the same place, but the circle goes there. If we want to do it differently, we can do if we select the star, uh, the circle first, and then hold shift and select the star. Now it'll be whatever we whatever we apply will be based off of the circle, kind of like it was the first time. Only it's not selection now; it's first selected. Uh, we can also do it by like smallest objects. We can do it uh, based off of our. Uh, we would do, probably won't use it based off of drawing. But I want to show you with multiple options, with multiple items. So maybe we want to do, um, since we have a circle already, let's create it like a light blue color and let's shrink it down. Let's just go duplicate this and duplicate this and we'll make a snowman. So we have a snowman here. And actually we'll use something that we did in our last tutorial, which is we'll select all three of these and we will go to object or we'll go to path union and make them all one thing and that way when we go to our if I hold down shift and we'll give it a nice blue outline so now we have a nice looking little snowman here and we want to create some buttons on the snowman so we'll create a button and we'll make it so we'll just make the whole thing black sure black with a blue outline so we have some buttons here and I, I control D I can duplicate this button control D and duplicate so now we have three let's do let's do three buttons if I want to align these so they're centered with the snowman I can do it a couple ways Relative to first selected, I can select the snowman, then hold shift and select all three buttons, then just go to center. Now they're all centered on the snowman. Um, and I, just, I only want to center them uh, along this axis, not uh, along the other axis, not vertically. If I center them vertically, they'll all be on top of each other. So there's like three on top of each other now. So what I want to do is actually well, the reason I have three of these is because if ever we want, we can select all three of them like this, or I can hold down the shift and select all three. And then we can distribute. So we've got a line, but we also have distribute. Um, and distribute, we can we can give, make e even spacing be between 
based on the center of these three objects, we can have them be spaced evenly apart horizontally. So to do that, we do uh, this one right here. Distribute centers equidistantly. Equidistantly, there you go. So let's, we could switch to center them with each other first, and now we can make sure there's an equal distance between each one. So if we drag this one down here and this one here, we can give an equal distance by selecting them all and then doing this here. Since it's a circle, all three of these are gonna do the same thing, really. It's just what point it's based off of. If they were stars, it might be a little bit different. So this is based off of the top point, the top edge. This is based off of the bottom edge. This one just makes the space in between them be equal. So if one of them was a star, if we select and delete, we bring the star in here. So this might be a little different. We Probably I would wanna do centers as well. So I center them all together. Uh, and then I distribute them based on the centers of them. Does that make sense? Um, and it really comes in handy if we have, if we were to control D on all of these and control D again. So if we get a whole bunch of things going on here like this, and we just drag them all over here. So now we wanna create a nice line. If we want all these to be lined up, first of all, we just center them all to each other, basically to the first selected, I guess is what it did. And then if I want to uh, make them relative to each other or distribute them relative to each other, we just do this. Now they're all distributed based on the center point. The center point of each is equally, is, is equal. And if we wanted to do it slightly different, we could say, use the top edge of each object and use that as the align point. So now these stars are down a little bit. It looks like they might be a little off center, but it's because it's based, basing it off of the top edge of that. So I would probably keep this one here to do that. Or this one, which does equal spacing between the gaps. So it uses the bottom and top edge and makes sure the white space between each object is the same size. Uh, yeah, you can have as many object in, objects in a line as you wanted to to do that. We can shrink these down and put them in here. Uh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's a line and distribute. Um, so just play with that. There's some more things we can do with it, but basically make sure you understand this relative to. I like to do page if I'm working on if I'm working within the page, like a printed page or something. And then I'll also do um, selection area a lot of times too. So center it based on the selection area. Uh, yeah, play with that. Different options there, but it's becomes super powerful when you want to do uh, have things line up properly. If you have lines, especially or little objects like this, it can become a really nice tool to have. In fact, I should have lined these up before I union them together. I should have lined these so they were all three in a straight line. Thanks for watching this video on align and distribute. Play with this tool, learn how to use it a little bit better, and I'll catch you in the next video.